Hello there. We're gonna froth some things today. Actually, we're gonna froth one thing, but we're gonna froth it many, many different ways. That thing is milk, and the thing we're gonna froth it in is many different milk frothers of varying price points. Let me lay them out real fast. Now, at-home milk frothers have been around for quite a while, and they are a very nice and usually pretty accessible way to kind of level up your home brewing and home drinking and coffee game. With these, you're able to access really nice milk texture that can be used with brewed drinks like coffee and Olay's, or if you have like a standalone espresso maker, you can make yourself lattes. And having these things in common combination with each other is usually a lot more accessible than having something like a standard espresso machine, which is generally pretty expensive. Now, with that being said, there is quite a range of milk frothers, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, count them six here in front of me, that we're gonna look at today, ranging anywhere from $10 at the very lowest to something close to $200. And we're gonna try to figure out which one seems to be this is very cheesy. <laughs> and I don't like this phrase, but it's what I'm saying. The best bang for your buck. I feel like I'm on like QVC or HGV, HGTV when I say that. Not only are we looking for the one that seems to be the most cost effective, but I wanna talk about which one of these might fit your lifestyle best because these are all fairly different, even though they do perform similar functions. And with those differences, it means that they might fit your drink preferences and or your home setup a little bit better. So we're gonna talk about all those things. We are going to try them all. And the first thing we need to do is talk about what these are and what their price points are. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. It's the holidays and I'm off to go visit family, which means it's time for my Vessis to go back in my suitcase. I've been a huge fan of Vessis for a long time and they're truly the perfect travel shoe, especially in the winter. Vessis are all made from a dual climate Dimatex knit material, which makes them lightweight, breathable, and yet cozy and warm. All of their models are super comfortable and there's something for everyone, from their sportier ones to something with a lower profile. Additionally, one of my favorite parts is that all Vessis are 100% waterproof, meaning that no matter what the weather or occasion is that you're wearing them in, your feet and socks will stay nice and dry. Also, Vessi is now carrying waterproof and insulated gloves, so your hands will stay as dry as your feet this year. So if you're ready to get started with your own pair of Vessis, I gotcha, because they're giving my followers 15% off when you go to the link below and use code MORGAN. That's Vessi.com slash Morgan to stay toasty and dry this winter, and thank you again to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. Starting on our most affordable end, <laughs> we have something that you are all probably pretty familiar. This right here is a handheld milk frother. This happens to be one of the most affordable and or cheapest out there. It is from Zule Kitchen and it costs $9.99, so under $10. Next up, we have the Bodum standalone milk frother. This I purchased for $29.99. Now that was a sale price across all vendors. Usually this costs 38.50. This is a hard video to do during like the Black Friday season. Next up, we have the Hoogary, pretty sure I'm saying that right, Hoogary milk frother. This was purchased for 36.99. However, it will usually retail for 49.99, so about $50. Next up, we have something that you all might be pretty familiar with. This is the Nespresso Arrochino. This is a standalone milk frother that was purchased for 88.99, but usually goes for $99. So we're seeing a double in price from here to here. These numbers are very hard to say. I'm doing my best to get them out. Next up, we get into the, the big boys at this end. We have this standalone milk frother from Maestry House. This was purchased for $89.99. And then next up, we have the Breville milk frother. This was purchased for $159.99. Okay, so we have quite a few price points here. We're gonna start on the cheapest end. We're gonna work our way up to the most expensive. So. Let's get started. Now the hand frother, as I mentioned before, is a pretty common tool, and most people, if they're a home barista or home brewer, have used one of these before. Pretty simple, you have your little frothing tip at the end, you have some power, whether it's chargeable or batteries, happens to be batteries in the back, then you have a button on top that when you press it, the bottom spins very quickly. Now the handheld frother does what's called the aerating portion of steaming milk. That being, you have your warm milk in a pitcher, and then when you put this in and turn it on, when it spins near the surface of the milk, it draws an air into the milk, causing your milk to become foamy and to expand like it would if you were steaming it on a machine. One very noticeable thing about these though, is that they don't heat your milk. So this does half of the job of a steam wand essentially, which means if we wanna use it today, we have to heat up our milk separately. Now today for all of these experiments, I'll be using whole milk. So this is a full fat milk, and that tends to be the best for frothing just in general. We'll get about eight ounces here. And then like you probably would if you were doing these steps at home, we're gonna pop this in the microwave to heat for about a minute. 
Now, when you're performing the, the frothing <laughs> portion of this activity, generally, if you were in a cafe, you would use something like this. This is a milk steaming pitcher. And so you would be doing the steps of both heating and frothing simultaneously in this. It has very high walls. It has a tip that you're able to pour out of and get nice lots of air. That all works very well. Well, however, if you are a home barista, you might not have one of these in your arsenal and our milk's done. So something you can do to kind of imitate this is get yourself a nice tall glass. You want this to be tall because remember the milk that we're gonna pour into this is gonna expand as we add air. I'm also using a glass one today just so you're able to actually see what's happening inside. Very carefully transfer into your, uh, your steaming vessel because I know kind of the steps that are involved with incorporating air. I'm gonna try to explain them to you as best as possible. We essentially wanna treat this like it's a steam wand which means we don't wanna incorporate air for too long. Otherwise we'll have a very, very stiff and kind of unpleasant foam. We wanna incorporate a little bit of air. Then we wanna dunk this down below the surface and incorporate that air into the rest of the milk. So what I like to do, I insert near the top. I'm tilting a little bit just to get a little bit more leverage. And I start spinning. I lift it up kind of near the surface just to pull in that air. Once I've done that just a couple of times, you start to see it expand. And then I'm gonna dunk this under the surface and I'm looking to create kind of a whirlpool effect, meaning any of the larger air bubbles that you're seeing at the top are being sucked under and pushed into the rest of the milk that is mostly liquid near the bottom. Now you can do this for however long. I like to do it until the top is pretty clear of big air bubbles. And we'll stop that. Some nice steamed milk. Now, say you have a coffee or something you're mixing in here and transfer. As you can see, we have nice expanded fluffy milk. Using a spoon, you can see the, the texture. We have a nice, pretty stiff texture that's setting up pretty quickly, but there's not a lot of large visible bubbles. Overall, it's pretty tasty. Now that might've seemed pretty easy. And you might off the bat be saying, well, I don't need to buy any of those more expensive things if something for $10 can do exactly what I need it to do. Here's kind of the thing though. And these are really tricky to use. You don't necessarily know what you're doing. A lot of what I just did was a lot of practice and muscle memory from being a barista and using a steam wand over and over and over again for many, many years. Being able to get foam like this really, really quickly and easily from one of these would be a little bit trickier if you don't have that past knowledge. So there's kind of a, a dictionary of knowledge you need to have before using one of these correctly. That being said though, they are very accessible. They are pretty easy to use just generally, even if you're not getting the, the nicest microphone possible. And overall, they're pretty nifty tools. However, can we also get something Thing that heats our milk? That's the next question. Let's move on to our next milk frother. Next up, we have the Bodum milk frother. This is the first of our standalone milk frothers. All of the rest of them are gonna be standalone. You won't see any more handheld ones today. Now this one, if you remember, goes for up to about $38.99. However, it is on sale across everywhere at about $30 right now. So again, this is a pretty significant increase from that under $10 hand frother that we had before. But with that, it does a lot more things. So build wise, this is pretty simple. You have one button on the front. It is an on and an off button. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. You have your base over here that this little frother can sit atop. And then you have a lid and inside, if you look there, you'll see something that looks very, very similar to the bottom of that hand frother we used earlier. This is doing a very, very similar function of frothing and incorporating milk. But at the same time, it is also heating your milk. So it is doing essentially everything that a steam wand on an espresso machine would do. Meaning that you can start with cold milk, put it in, press your button, and you are good to go. Additionally, one of the really nice things about this frother and also about most of the other frothers that we're gonna be looking at today is that it has a self-timer function, meaning that you don't have to stop and start this thing. I mean, you do have to start it, <laughs> but you don't have to think about when it needs to start. You can kind of just trust the process here. So let's find out what kind of milk the Bodum frother makes. I've got my, uh, my tasting cup and my, uh, Pardon me here, my tasting spoon. We're going to fill just above the minimum line, put this on, and then in theory, all we have to do is press go. Immediately inside it starts spinning and slowly but surely our air will incorporate. It's very exciting, <laughs> it's very easy. This in theory is gonna take about one minute in total. It's just kind of a waiting game. <laughs> now, I imagine during this time, if you were brewing coffee like I am not right now, this would be your time to brew your coffee while all of this is happening. Okay, then you hear a, a very slight click your milk is all done. Now we don't really have a, a spout here. So what we're gonna do is just pour it out. And that is some thick milk. This is certainly, very, very certainly a very stiff milk. This is a very heavy foam. If you're thinking in terms of cappuccinos, this is definitely what I would call a dry milk. As you can see, we, uh, we've got some, some stiff peaks here. However, let's sip, let's see the texture. 
certainly heats up the milk to quite a nice degree. This is on the hotter side of how I usually like my milk. This is probably sitting, I would say about 155 to 160 degrees. So this is on like the upper end of milk temperatures. You still have some, some nice liquidy milk <laughs> down at the bottom. However, as you can see, just with how stiff it is, a majority of this is now foam. If you are someone who perhaps prefers a little bit more traditional milk foam, I would say, as opposed to something a little bit wetter, this would be the milk for you. Let's move on to our next one. Now we have the Hugery, which if you'll remember, and if I can remember, <laughs> landed at around $36.99. However, on normal retail during not holiday season, it will often land around $49.99. So we are about $10 up from the bottom. And with those $10, you do get a pretty significant upgrade in terms of what it can do. And that is that it not only does hot foam, <laughs> which I don't really have a better word, hot foam versus a uh, cold foam as well. So this has the function to both heat your milk and froth it, but you can also choose to simply froth it, leaving you with something that will be a lot more appropriate over top, like cold brew or like a nice latte or like a fun touch to something as a cold drink. One thing I will say is I think you lose a little bit design wise with this one. I think personal preference here, the bottom looks a little bit nicer. It feels a little bit nicer. However, we do get cold foam here and for that we will be grateful. So let's make some. Again, this is a very simple process. This is a timed process, so there's very little for you to do. There are our minimum and maximum markers. <laughs> Pop that in, put this on top. And then for cold, we hold this for a couple seconds. It lights up blue and we're off to the races. All of these processes generally take around a minute to about a minute and a half. None of them really take longer than that. Boy, is it getting frothy in there. <laughs> I took lactate, by the way. For anyone worried about me, I took a hefty amount of lactate before today. So in theory, we're gonna be okay. People are sometimes curious. I'm not fully lactose intolerant. I'm, I'm lactose sensitive is how I describe it. I can eat cheese like all day, every day and be totally fine. But the minute whole milk and or ice cream gets to me, that's where the trouble starts. And when I become a fairly unpleasant person to be around. We're standing here two minutes in, and I was under the impression that this one was timed. Based on everything I had read about it, however, it doesn't seem to be stopping, and at this point we are far past the reasonable amount of frothing, so I'm gonna stop it. Ooh, right up to the top. That is some pretty significant cold foam in there. Cold foam will disintegrate pretty quickly. You gotta put this over your drinks like instantly and then stir it in and enjoy it to really get that fluffiness because already you can see it's starting to decrease in size and those bubbles are coming to the top and popping. But of course, some tasting. It sure is cold steamed milk. And in that way, it is very tasty. I'm curious about the hot steaming just because of the fact that I was under the impression that this was going to stop <laughs> and it did not. So let's put some more milk in here. Let's use the hot steaming function and we may have to stop it ourselves. This is a lesson in sometimes even when we do read the instructions, things still go awry, which leads me to believe that I'm better off just not reading the instructions in general ever. Okay, a little bit more milk past the minimum line. And then we press it quickly to activate the hot function. And it goes. I'm gonna keep my eye on this. I have doubts that it's gonna stop on its own. And because of that, we have to keep an eye on it. The tricky part with this now is that when you are steaming, you will rely on being able to tell the heat of the milk inside by touching the pitcher. When the pitcher walls heat up, you're able to pretty closely track how hot the actual milk is. And with practice, you'll be able to know exactly when to stop. I can put my hands on this, but these walls are so thick and so insulated that I can't really tell what the milk temperature is inside. And so we're gonna let this run for about a minute in total, and then we're gonna stop it and see where we're at. The walls certainly are heating a little bit, so I know something's happening in there. We're gonna say that's enough. We have some frothed milk. Let's check the temperature. It's a lot of froth. <laughs> One minute brought it to, I would say, around 130, 135 degrees. It could have definitely gone for a little bit longer purely on a temperature side. However, the texture we have is already pretty substantially thick and it's already also setting up to be quite a lot of foam. And so just from a foam standpoint, I wouldn't necessarily want it to go that much longer, but from a temperature standpoint, I might want it a little bit more. But that being said, that's the Hugery milk frother. I have milk on my hands now. It does a little bit more than the Bodum one does, but it also needs a little bit more attention than the Bodum one does. That leads us 
to our next one. This right here is a standalone milk frother that you might be pretty familiar with. This is from the brand Nespresso. Very, very common name, very popular household name. And the Arrochino, which is this model right here, is one that's been around and pretty popular as well for quite a bit of time. If you look at it, it does look pretty similar to the Boda. You have a little bit more like interesting design texture on it, but all in all, it's pretty simple with a singular button on the top. And then inside, you have your lid that you can take off and you have a frothing unit. Now, you will notice that this frothing unit is on the side, whereas all of our previous milk frothers have been placed in the center. So we're gonna see how that affects the overall final texture that we get. Now, one thing that is very, very nice about the Nespresso is that all of their functions are timed. And so while you do have to start your Nespresso, it's not gonna do that for you. You don't have to stop it. It knows how long it needs to go for, and it is programmed to give you the optimal, in theory, texture for whatever you're doing, whether it's hot or cold. That leads us also to the point that this can do both hot and cold. So not only is it timed, but it also does two temperatures as well. And I think we're gonna start off by making some hot milk. Once more, very simply, right to the minimum line, pop on our lid, and then we simply press once and immediately it starts frothing itself. If you are interested in doing cold milk, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is press down this button for about two seconds rather than just pressing it once. The lights will turn blue and you're good to go. This milk frother takes slightly longer than our previous ones did. This one sits at about 70 to 80 seconds in total, so a little bit more than a minute, but still, it's not a significant amount of time more. And we're all done. It is a very, very quiet frother. And now we pour. Good amount of steam coming off, so I'm feeling very hopeful for the final temperature that it's at. That's a good like 150, 155. That is a very pleasant temperature. Incredibly drinkable right out the gate. Now, one thing you'll notice is that all of these milk textures probably look pretty similar. That's because they kind of are. With these, there's not like a lot of flexibility like you would have with a steam one where you're able to control how long you're aerating for versus how long you're like incorporating that air into the rest of the milk. They kind of just aerate for the entirety of the time. And while you're not left with many big bubbles, you definitely have like a very nice like microfoam here. It is a very stiff microfoam. There's not a lot of ways to change that at all. Does it feel nice? Yes, this is a very nice tactile experience. Does it work well? Also, yes. Is it expensive? Yes. <laughs> but that leads us to the even more expensive ones. We now have the big boys, the ones that are gonna take up significantly more counter space than any of the frothers we have looked at so far. Our first frother right here is from Maestry House. Now this costs just about $90. So we have not crossed that $100 mark. And for it, we have something that looks a lot more like a blender <laughs> than it necessarily does a milk frother. However, we have some buttons here. And with those buttons comes a good deal of customization. I say as I just press them willy nilly. Before we look at the buttons, of course, a couple of things. We have a lid, we have a spout, which is very nice. And then inside you have your frothing unit right here. And then in the base, you have a heating unit. So pitcher goes right here, it's removable, that goes on. And then when you're ready, you just pour. Let's look at our buttons. The first thing you'll notice is a temperature. Now you can change the temperature. You can do cold, which happens to be cold is right there. Nothing on it. You can do a low temperature at 120 degrees Fahrenheit, a normal drinking temperature for a latte about 140 degrees. And you also have 160 degrees, which is definitely on like the, the extra hot range. Additionally, you can also change your level of foam. So if you use this button, if you go over here, let me read you their definitions exactly. If you go on that far left side, you just have 10% foam. If you go to the middle, you have about 50% foam, meaning for a latte or maybe a, a lighter cappuccino. And then if you go over here to this one with the most foam, you get 80% milk foam, which they're saying is suitable for a cappuccino or a macchiato. We've got some different foam textures to play around with. I think we go for the lightest foam texture and the greatest foam texture and see how those two compare. And I also say we do some different temperatures in there as well. Our milk goes in. And I think for our first go ahead, let's do 120. Let's see how low that goes. We're gonna look for low amounts of foam and then we press start. And of course it goes and it's great. I'm uh, frankly quite excited about the possible customization of my milk foam options. I think having different levels of foam for different drinks is a really, really great thing. It's what baristas automatically do. If you are ordering, let's say a latte, cappuccino, traditional cappuccino for sure, or a macchiato, like they are going to steam those all slightly differently and it makes an effect in your overall drink. So being able to have that amount of control at home, very nice thing. Once more, this is an incredibly quiet milk frother overall aesthetically too. I think this is, this is pretty pleasing to look at. I think I said it already, is that you do sacrifice some counter space with this though. This definitely becomes a part of a much larger home brewing setup than like a little tiny thing you can kind of plant wherever it fits. 
and with a simple beep, we're all good to go. Well, I say simple beep, it beeps four times. <laughs> it is very clear when it is all done. So let's experience our milk foam. One note that I think I should make is that if you want to experience your milk foam, you should probably take the lid all the way off. As much as I like the lid and as much as there is room to pour liquid out of it, it does hinder a good amount of that foam being able to come out. Already, I can see though, we have something that is a lot, I don't wanna say more wet, <laughs> it's a lot looser than any of our previous milk textures. In fact, this looks like something you might be able to pour lots here out of if you had enough kind of transferring and like putting in the proper pitchers. There is a, a noticeable layer on top, but besides that, this is is still mostly liquid. It's a lower temperature for sure. Definitely right around 120, if not like 125. It might be itching towards 130, but it's a lower temp for sure. Personally, if I was drinking a latte, that's about what I would want it to be at. This is quite a bit closer to something you might experience in like a specialty cafe with a barista who is pouring milk that's made for latte art. So you're getting a design on top. And then with that comes a milk that is generally a little bit less textured than something more traditional. That's what this kind of feels like. I am very curious about their more traditional settings though. So let's heat up our milk some more and let's make it a lot foamier. This really is the, the QVC episode <laughs> of Morgan Drinks Coffee this month. Okay, our frother is clean again. Let me get some more milk. Pop that right in there, put on our lid. And then this time we're gonna go for that 140 degrees. And we will also go for the stiffest foam option and start. Okay, well, let's experience some more milk. <laughs> At this point, my body is starting to reject the milk just a little bit. Now, just by looking at that, you can see that's a lot more akin to what we were experiencing with the previous milk frothers. That is a whole bunch of foam. Feels quite a bit warmer. It's good. After all the, the strange and weird coffee things we look at and do on this channel, I almost expect things just to not work when I try them <laughs> because with most of our experiments and some of the gear we do, things just don't always work the way you think they're going to. This is working exactly the way I want it to and think it's going to. And it's great. <laughs> I keep waiting for like the jump scare, I suppose, and it's just not coming. We have milk that is substantially thicker. It is substantially warmer. That's what we asked for and that's what we got. However, if you want to tack another 50 to $60 onto the price tag of this, you can get something else. And I have that something else. So let me go get our last one. Now this right here, is from Revel. Revel is a very well-known appliance brand. You'll find them in the coffee space with a ton of really, really great accessible, like very easy to use home coffee machines and espresso machines. You'll also find them outside and just like the general kitchen appliance scene. They do a lot of stuff. Right here is their milk frother. Now this one is significantly more expensive than anything we've looked at, including our past one. This comes in at right around $160 just under that at 159.99 as all things are priced. Let's walk through the mechanics of it because on the surface, it looks not dissimilar to what we just had. So of course you have a lid, you have your main carafe and let me actually show you what your little frothers are. The machine itself comes with two attachments that you can put into the, the little frothing unit right there. And they are labeled as doing different things. So this one right here, which looks a little bit more similar to what we've seen in the past with the little spinning units is made for making milk for cappuccinos, which is generally a stiffer, more foamy milk. Then you have this one right here, and this is for your latte milk. So my assumption is that it makes milk that is a little bit smoother, a little less foamy in general. So you get some customization there. And then also you have a whole lot of things going on with the style. They give you quite a bit of information on here and it is very intuitive to read. There's not really any buttons to press, any like settings to push through. It's very much like you read this and you decide what you want and you just scroll it there. It's very nice. Now, of course this does cold milk if you want to have a cold foam. You just, uh, you just put your little settings bar down there, press start, you get cold foam, easy. But then you have all this nice range of temperatures that you can choose from. They make this easy for you too. They really, they really walk you through it. You have milk that is gonna be lightly warmed. That is around the 120 degrees. Go down to 115, go up to 125. It's kind of that range of like a warm drink. Then you have like the, the 135 to 145 range. This is a more optimal temperature for larger drinks like lattes. Your milk is gonna taste very, very sweet. It is a nice, temperature. It's a good drinking temp and it'll last you for a good little bit. If you are making a drink that is sitting at 120 degrees, you probably want to drink it pretty quickly because it's going to cool down very fast. And then of course, if you are, if you are someone who likes an extra hot latte, which 
some people do, totally respect that, you can really just crank it over to the 165 range too. Very intuitive. I think we're gonna start off with their optimal milk temperature range. So we'll sit right at 140, we'll call that good. And then I think we are gonna try both of these, but we're gonna start off, I think we're gonna start off with our latte. Slot that in there, pops in very easily, and we put our milk in. Lid on, immediately it goes. Now, this frother is a bit louder. I think this is the loudest one I have used so far. It is at the very least a consistent sound. There's not much like fluctuation in it, but you can hear it. If this is a concern of noise, something to note for sure. With a nice beep, we're all good to go. We have our latte milk. I will say something about this is that your pitcher is large enough to give it a good spin, which is very nice because you can kind of do the act of like what's called polishing your milk, which is just continuing to incorporate your foam into your milk. And then also it helps like knock out any large air bubbles. Really, this is just one big game of like homogenizing your milk into one texture. Honestly, this looks like an awesome texture. A little bit stiff to pour a latte it with, I think, but for drinking, very nice. If you handed me a drink with that amount of foam in it in a cafe, I would have absolutely zero complaints. That is delicious. Great texture, a lot of really, really nice fine bubbles, but not too much. There's still a good amount of liquid in there. I'd be really happy with that. However, let's make some cappuccino milk. It's funny, I started pouring in the milk before I remembered to switch out the discs. Remember to take out your latte disc and ideally replace it with your cappuccino disc. That goes in. And then because this is a cappuccino, traditionally with smaller drinks that you're gonna drink very quickly, you will want a slightly cooler temperature just so you don't have to wait for it to cool at all. So we're gonna pop this a little bit cooler. We have the cappuccino part in, here we go. Our cappuccino's ready. Ooh, it's stiff. <laughs> you can see inside noticeably more large air bubbles than I would say anything in the past has had. So I'm gonna do my best. Just give a couple taps, knock out some of those. However, with a nice pour, most of those visible air bubbles get knocked out and or incorporated. So easy solution. So this is a slightly cooler milk that is most certainly, you can tell just by the, the quantity, like the mass of milk that we have here, it's a lot foamier, foamier. And I really haven't drank this much whole milk in a very long time. There was absolutely nothing wrong with that. That is very lovely. However, very stiff milk. Again, if that is your preference, it really does the job. This is like craftable foam. <laughs> you can really just, really just mold it to be whatever you want it to be in here. Let's get all of the things we just looked at back out in front of us. Let's talk about them one last time. I think the really fun part about today is that nothing we tried today was bad. Everything was really good. It just did a range of different things and it's kind of a matter of picking which of those things are important to you and which aren't for the price points that they're at. Now, just to review them really fast before I give my final thoughts, we'll go back to what we tried out at the beginning. We have the hand frother. This is $10. This is a very, very simple tool. It does require a good bit of practice and it also is only really half of the function of steaming milk. It is only the aerating portion. And so to be able to use it and to make a hot latte, you also need to have warm milk and you also need to have like a microwave or a stove topper, however you choose to warm your milk. Next up, we have the bodum. Now the bodum only does hot milk. It does not do cold milk as well. But that being said, it does make really nice hot milk. There is that. And it also sits at about 30 to $40. We have the Hugory, which does both cold and hot milk. However, it does not have a timed function. So you are in charge of stopping it and starting it. Then we have the Nespresso, which does cold and hot. It is a very small unit. It looks really nice. It feels nice. And it also has a timed function of both for your hot and your cold. So you again, do not have to touch it. Once you have started it, it will end itself. That was a little dramatic. <laughs> it will finish its cycle on its own, not it will end itself. Then moving to the larger ones, we have the Maestri House. This sits at just under $100. This one can do hot, it can do cold, it can do medium temperatures, and it can also do multiple levels of foam. And then we've got this over here. This is $160 for a milk frother. However, it does cold and it does everything in between up to extra hot. You also have, again, control over whether you want it to be like latte milk, meaning a looser milk, or cappuccino milk, meaning milk that is a little bit thicker. And it does both of those really, really well. If I was you and I was looking at a milk frother, I would definitely be asking myself whether I actually want the function of cold foam. Personally, I'm not someone who really drinks cold foam ever. I will occasionally layer like hot foam on top of like coffee for a cafe au lait, but I don't really put cold foam on everything. So for 
for me, that's not really a priority. If that is you, then I would highly recommend going with the Bodum. I think this is a really, really great option for a quick and efficient way to make warm foam that you can put in your drinks for a pretty decent price point for what this is. I really like the Nespresso. I'll be totally honest, I, I do like it. I think it works incredibly well. I think it's very well designed as well. However, if you're not someone who needs cold foam, I would not necessarily choose this over this. I don't think this offers much beyond the cold foam that the Bodum doesn't already do. And then it's kind of a matter of these two, because frankly, I really like both of these. I think if you are wanting something that does cold foam as well as hot foam, if you are wanting that level of control over the type of foam you're getting, I think you should take a peek at these. I think these are really awesome. And between the two, honestly, I think the Maestri House is pretty great. Now, I love the Breville, frankly. I think the Breville is fantastic for what it is. I really enjoy how thoughtfully designed it feels. Like everything from just the labels to how simple it is, it gives you a lot of control without making you feel like you have too many options to have to scroll through. And that's something I think Breville does in general pretty well. That being said, it comes with a high price point. I think $160 is a lot to ask someone to spend on just a milk frother. And so I think if you're looking for something a little bit lower, I think this does a really, really good job as well. Your answers and your needs may totally differ from mine, but those are my thoughts about all six of these milk frothers at these very different price points. I will just throw out there <laughs> just as for funs and giggles i do think if you can afford to have one of these i do think having just a handheld frother around is really really great you can do like a billion things with these they're awesome and they're also very very affordable that was today's uh look and review and video <laughs> i will have these all linked below if you want to check them out yourselves none of these are sponsored none of these are affiliate links either these are all just machines that i have collected and or have purchased on my own that i thought would be a fun thing to look at and potentially helpful if you are doing Christmas shopping or or what have you in the new year. I'm curious to hear any of your experiences. If you have any of these, feel free to let me know. Feel free to let me know what you are looking for in a milk frother. I'm always very curious. There's such a wide range of milk things that one can do. But in the meantime, I will see you next time. I will say that this might be the last video for the year. Not, not for shorts, of course. I'll be stuck doing those until the end of time. <laughs> However, this will likely be the last long Morgan Drinks Coffee video until New Year's. I'm gonna take a little bit of time off. I'm gonna go enjoy the holidays. I'll be back very, very soon with lots of exciting news. So I'm gonna head off screen. I unfortunately don't have a beverage to take with me and I refuse to drink any more whole milk. So I guess I'll just take my notebook and go. I hope you all have a great holiday season and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Now I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere you'll find me. I'm here on YouTube once a week plus YouTube shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every single day. Again, have an awesome holiday season. It has been a very, very fun year. It's been a very dramatic year uh, and I'm looking forward to next year as well. Until the next time I see you, have a great holiday season. I'll catch you next time. Bye everyone.